Hello friends, welcome back to another video. I hope you're super excited about today's video because we are welcoming fall into the apartment, into our hearts and on our shirts. Cause well, okay. I'm not gonna lie, my shirt is more Halloween-y, but it has a fall color and it has a little ghost and pumpkin on there, a carved pumpkin. But I don't care, it's super cute and it's also still warm out, so I've decided to wear a t-shirt instead of instead of any of my Halloween stuff, which is a little bit um, heavier. So anyway, welcome to my channel. My name's Melissa and you've come across Melissa's Cozy Corner where we talk about baking books and other cozy content. So it's a very relaxed video today. I figured we can go ahead and start decorating a little bit and then I could show you some of the crocheted projects I've worked on. I won't be showing you how I did the crocheted projects because I'm not a crochet master. I'm a very crochet beginner but I followed some great tutorials online and I'm gonna go ahead and share all these tutorials down in the description below when I show you the pieces I've worked on. And then I figured we could make this, it's been quite popular online, I've been seeing it quite a bit, where you put like apples or pears or um, some kind of fruit on the bake tray and then puff pastry right on top. It's like an upside down Danish. However, we're gonna go ahead and fancy it up, spice it up. I tried out the recipe I saw, which is honey, apples and puff pastry. I thought it was okay, but I'm gonna be honest, I thought it was also a little bland. So we're gonna go ahead and spice it up by adding our pumpkin spice mix that we made in our last video, and also some sugar and some other tasty pieces, just to make sure it has a really great flavor and it's gonna be really delicious and tasty. And we're gonna make a vegetable oven bake. I love doing the vegetable oven bakes because it's just really easy. You chop all your vegetables up, mix it together, toss it in the oven, it bakes for like 30 minutes, and you have a delicious, delicious dinner. And this is gonna be the first pumpkin recipe of the year. I figured if I have pumpkin now, I can sneak pumpkin pie into the fridge soon. Um, so if I make pumpkin, like baked pumpkin, then I can go ahead and make pumpkin pie. I think that's how it works, right? So we're gonna go ahead and first do a little decorating. I'll share some crocheted patterns and some crocheted projects I worked on, and then we're gonna do a little baking and dinner. I hope you guys are really excited for this video. I'm excited to welcome fall and have you guys welcome fall and us share our fall fun stuff. And yeah, so let's go ahead and let's start decorating. <laughs> Before I actually start decorating the apartment, I thought I would show you some of the shops that I actually go to to find some of my decorations. This one's Depot. I call it Depot because it's D-E-P-O-T and that's how I first pronounced it and that's just kind of how what stuck. They have some really cute items. This is where I actually got my mushroom cup from my emergency kit video from two weeks ago. I also grabbed this cup as well for my partner so he would have a fall cup as well. And they have the most cutest sets. They have these really adorable like place settings but they get kind of expensive. This shop's a little bit cheaper but they have these adorable foxes. There's a boy fox and a girl fox and I kept walking back and forth trying to decide if I wanted to buy them or not. But they also have a really cute selection of these little adorable pumpkins that are nice and soft. That way if the cats like chew on them, I'm not too much too worried about it, but don't worry, they don't they won't chew on them. And they have a couple other little items here. But at this shop I just found the little pumpkins and then we went to Flanza Cola, which is our plant or our garden center, and they do the best pumpkin spread. Ever. So each pumpkin area has different pumpkins you can eat and also decorate with and they have some really fun pumpkins here as well. So we have a couple of really great shops that we find some really fun fall decorations at but we have to get in there as soon as possible because the fall decorations normally sell out or we switch to Christmas quite early on. And now I'm just adding some cute little fall things to my sofa. So I have my orange blanket I always pull out during the fall season. And I grabbed some new pillows, I ordered some new ones, and it was so funny because they like expanded really quickly because they were vacuum packed. And yeah, that's pretty much it. The cat's like laying on this blanket, so I put it out, and that's my sofa spot. But my sofa is one of the most important parts. And I did buy the fox boy and girl because they're just so freaking cute. <laughs> so. As promised, I'm going to share some of the crocheted projects I've worked on over the last couple weeks. I, again, said 
Like I said, I'm a beginner. I am quite new to this. I remember crocheting when I was like eight or nine when my mom was really into it, but all I could do was like a really long string and that was it. However, I decided to jump on YouTube and look up some fall crochet patterns or projects and I found some really great ones and some really great content creators as well who walked through the process really slowly. Some of them I even turned down to 0.25 just so I could see them doing that process over and over and over again without feeling the pressure of having to do it really fast like they do. However, these content creators have been fantastic. I, I think you guys remember my my little ghosts from last video. I made all of these and I followed a great tutorial on YouTube. I'll go ahead and put it in the description below so you can check it out if you want to. But these are the little ghosties I made. It did take a little bit of time. My first ghostie, if you follow me on Instagram, oh, I posted it last week too. You would have seen it last week. If not, you can check out the video. He's a little bit of a different ghost. He's a little lopsided. But after doing one or two, I was able to actually get them to look like little ghosties. Super cute. And I have them now everywhere all around the apartment. Actually, whoops. You can help me out. Is a ghost fall or Halloween? Like, what's, where does a ghost land? Where is it? It's kind of like in that plane of between the two for me, and I don't know where to put them. And I have them all around my apartment now because I've been making them, but I really want to hang them from like some fishing wire from the ceiling so I have little ghosties floating around. I made one that's glow in the dark, uh, which is really fun. But I thought it would be really fun to kind of hang them around some string so they hang down, but I don't know if I can do that now or I have to wait to do that. So. If you can let me know what your opinion is, is the ghost fall or Halloween, then I can decide when I can put up my little ghosties. But that's one of the projects I've been working on quite a bit. I just sit here and make ghosties in the evening when I'm feeling like I need to do something with my hands, um, but don't want to play on my phone. I also made my first pumpkin. She's not perfect, but I think she's adorable. And that's all that matters. The great thing about pumpkins is if they look a little lopsided or a little weird, I mean pumpkins look all sorts of different ways. Pumpkins are all sorts of awkward and weird. So it's my pumpkin. I love it. And I've been making a couple more. I'll be working on another one today, but these ones actually take quite a bit more time. However, my favorite, my most favorite project I've worked on and I'm most proud of whoop, is this pumpkin beret. I absolutely love this thing. I'm so proud of myself. The content creator that made this was really easy to follow as well. And I think this is the cutest freaking thing ever. <laughs> and I'm planning to wear it quite a bit. Right now it's still quite hot outside like I had said earlier. So it does, it's a bit too warm to wear right now. But it's so freaking cute and it has like a little leaf and yeah, so I'll post the content creator who made this down below, but truly freaking, ah, it's so cute. I'm so excited, if you couldn't tell. I'm going to a pumpkin patch in October when I go to the US, and I'm wearing this to a pumpkin patch because you have to. You have to wear a pumpkin beret to a pumpkin patch to get your pumpkins and eat your pumpkin donuts and drink your pumpkin cider and just, or it, I don't think there's pumpkin cider, apple cider? pumpkin latte, <laughs> pumpkin spice latte, and just have a pumpkin day. So I'm really excited to wear that. I, I'm so excited that I was able to create that. And like I said, I'm a beginner, so if you're a beginner as well, all you need is some yarn, which I do have to admit, once you start crocheting, the yarn is everywhere. I have yarn everywhere in the apartment right now, and it's an addiction, but that's okay. At least it's yarn. And, um, but I've been crocheting when I've been sitting here and the projects are really nice and simple. All of the pieces I've made today will be in the description below from the creators that showed me how to create them. So that way you can make them as well. If you do end up making any of these pieces, I would love to see them. So you can always post them on Instagram or tag me on Instagram and your story um, here, if you, well, here if you want to and um, I would love to see what you create. But this is kind of our first activity of the year. 
Crocheting is a really nice like starter project I think for fall because you're still transitioning from the really hot months to the cooler months so you're not wanting to do all that much, at least I'm not. So I think crocheting is a perfect evening activity as well so when you're sitting here watching a TV show or when your partner's playing a video game, it's a great little activity to just keep your hands busy. Um, it's fun, it's distracting and then you get to create these amazing little things that are just fun to look at and easy to pack away and don't cost all that much money because you're buying a whole big thing of yarn and then making umpty billion little ghosts. <laughs> That's our first creative project for this fall. I would love to hear what you guys would want to do next. I bought some pictures to do the ghost paintings that I've been seeing all over TikTok and Instagram. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about these things right here. I also was planning on painting some leaves to look like little bats, but I'm also thinking that's more towards Halloween, so maybe later October, uh, or any other activities you're looking at doing. At the very beginning of October, though, we will be making our witchy broomstick, which I'm super excited about. I can't wait to do that. I think I might post um, some pieces that will be needed for that project on my Instagram so that we, if you want to do it with me, we can all do it together. But that's our first creative project of the fall. I know I didn't do it with you, but I think you guys should do it anyways. <laughs> so let's go ahead and jump into the kitchen, make ourselves a little bit of a sweet treat so that way we can enjoy it after we have our vegetable. Um, mix as well. We'll go ahead and actually just start with our sweet treat, pop them in the oven, and then we'll prep our dinner at the same time while those are baking so that way we can go ahead and have dinner and then have our sweet treat afterwards. So I'll go ahead and see you guys at the very end of the video. Well, you'll see my hands, but I'll see you guys at the very end of the video to do our goodbyes and yeah, so let's go ahead and pop into the kitchen and make ourselves our sweet dessert and our delicious dinner. For these upside down Danish puff pastry things, we're going to be cutting our apples into thin slices. We're also going to be grabbing some pre-made puff pastry dough. You can make your own as well, but pre-made works great for this recipe and cutting it into rectangles that are about a little bit smaller than my hand. So medium sized rectangles. And we're going to be adding a little bit of sugar onto the parchment paper. So just about a teaspoon to two teaspoons where each Danish is going to be sitting adding our apples directly on top of that sugar so it starts to caramelize together when it's baking, adding a little bit of honey so we have a little bit more sweetness. You can't have enough sweetness with these things. And then I'm adding my pumpkin spice and again a little bit of sugar so that way it gets mixed in really well. We're going to press our puff pastry directly on top of our apples making sure everything sticks really nicely. And then after we have all of our danishes ready, we're going to do an egg wash, sprinkle again a little bit more sugar because sweetness is happy. <laughs> and these are going to be baking for about 15 to 20 minutes at the temperature your package for your puff pastry says. Now we can move on to our vegetable bake so that way we can make some dinner so we can actually enjoy those delicious puff pastry apple danish thingies. For this vegetable bake, we're going to be using our first pumpkin of the season. I'm just cutting everything into bite-sized pieces. So the Hokkaido pumpkin is cut up and we can keep the shell, the skin on the Hokkaido pumpkin. We're going to be using the broccoli and the stem because you can enjoy the stem. Just make sure you cut off the end in any weird pieces. With our broccoli and our pumpkin, we've added some green beans. Green beans are a bit of a new thing for me in this veggie bake. It's not needed, it's just I thought I would try it out. With everything, we've added also potatoes, carrots, onions. We bought some paprika sausage to add a nice spice in there. And we've added fresh rosemary, pepper, salt, paprika, and um, thyme as well. So just as any spices or herbs that you think are going to fit best with yours, spread it out on a hot baking sheet until it's flat, baking at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit, so very, very hot, 200 degrees Celsius, and baking it for about 30 minutes until everything is super soft and tasty. This is one of my favorite dinners, and it's so easy, and you can make it fit for any season. Fall is the best. And now that dinner has been enjoyed, we can enjoy ourselves one of these delicious upside down Danish apple things. I don't know what you want to call it, but with all of those spices, we're going to be adding some whipped cream right on top. And of course, 
a little bit more cinnamon or pumpkin spice seasoning on top because this has to be folly and just every bite needs to be fall delicious. So I hope you guys enjoy both of these recipes because they're both delightful. So it's been quite a busy evening. Um, I do a lot of these videos in my later evening time because I do my work during the day of course but I have had loads of fun. It's really nice to see my apartment followed up and <laughs> having that really nice cozy feeling. I don't know how you feel when you start putting out your fall decorations, but for me, it's it's like stepping into the next season. I used to never be into decorations until I actually moved to Germany. And um, I know a lot of Germans who love their deco um, decorations and who will set them out and decorate everything and they change it monthly. I'm still a seasonal changer. But fall has to be one of my favorite times to decorate because you get all these lovely colors in the apartment. It's very warm. And then you light a candle and I love the DW home candles. They smell so delightful. I shared one candle in my emergency kit, but the candle I love most is this pumpkin toffee can candle. This is pumpkin toffee candle from DW home. This smells like Oh, it smells so good. It smells so sweet. And I think it could be sickening if like, um, you probably just stuck it against your nose all day long. But I really like it and I light it in the evenings when I'm watching my movies or my shows and I just think it's such a delightful candle to bring in the fall smells. And then you have all your fall colors like I said and it's just so warm and comfortable. I'm really excited for when it starts cooling down so I can open the door and cozy up with my blanket and my book and yeah. Oh actually I finished the London Seance Society. I'm not really sure if you want to know about this book but I had talked about it in my last video and I had mentioned that I was about 50 pages into it. I just finished the book. I would say it's probably a 3.75 for me. It was very spooky. Um, in the sense of the mystery part of it, I thought it was actually really well done with the mystery part. I couldn't guess what was gonna happen, but I really enjoyed that mystery part. I think the ghost stuff, I can't figure out if I wish there was more ghosty stuff or if it was just right. I, I, I don't think there could have been less. If there was less, I think I would have been a little bit disappointed, but I think it was just the right amount or there could have been more. I really love the relationships that were in this book. I think the relationships were very interesting. We do have LGBTQ plus representation in this novel, which is really interesting as this is a Victorian, um, as this takes place in the Victorian era, so in the 1800s, and or I think it's like 1865 if I remember correctly. And I, it's kind of scandalous and like, ooh, naughty. And also it's just a very interesting book. I thought it was, I think it could, I think it was well written, but I think there were parts of me that were felt a little disconnected. Like I wasn't being pushed to read it more and more. I found it entertaining, but I didn't find the motivation. Like there was nothing that would make me wake up in the morning and be like, oh, I'm gonna sit down and read this book. And I've only found a couple books that make me do that. So it's not like this is a bad book. I still think it's a good read. I think it's a really nice read for right now, actually, especially since it's not super dark, but it does have that mystery, murdery, uncomfortable feeling of where you know something's happening in the background, but you're not sure exactly what just yet. So. If you're looking for a murder ghosty book about seances, this is a great novel to start with. I think because it's a historical magical realism book, I think it's a great little introduction into the ghosty fall feels. Um, so if you're looking for another read, that one is on my recommendation list, just as a nice little fun read that's a little spooky and a little... Mm, how would I put it? Uh, that's a little spooky and makes you think a bit. So. Let, that's London Seance Society. I just wanted to share, <laughs> but I'll go ahead and leave you guys there. I would love to hear again about what books you're reading, about what activities you're doing, what you're most excited about for the fall. Let's go ahead and start some conversations in the comments below. If you haven't already, I would subscribe as we're going to be doing way more crafts, way more bakes, way more folly feels, and I can't wait to see you guys next time. 
And now I'll let you go. So I hope you have a fantastic day, a fantastic evening, wherever you're at. You enjoy all of the colors, whether they be spring or fall that are coming your way. And I'll see you guys next time. Ciao.